Hello. How are we all doing? I thought we'd do a bit of a coding challenge. Try something a bit new. We're going to be trying to code Catan in C Sharp. Uh, C Sharp because that's what I have been using a lot uh, at my job. So it's kind of a, a bit of a learning experience for me as well. Um, obviously, I know how to use C Sharp. But I wanted to focus on writing clean code and potentially doing test-driven development as well. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's basically writing the tests before you write the code um, and using the tests to guide you in writing the code. Um, if you don't, want, don't know what Catan is, uh, I will show you. It's essentially a, a board game. What's the website called? That's it. Um, so there is a version online called colonist.io. Um, I'll show you. Just make a... How do I do this? Continuous guest. Oh, there we go. All right, there we go. So this is what a Catan board looks like. Um, you place down settlements in a position. That's probably not the best way of starting to uh, to des describe this game. Let's start with the board. There is a board, as you can see, with lots of hexagons on it, and each hexagon represents a different resource. So you've got stuff like wheat and wool, uh, you've got ore, wood, brick, and a desert, which doesn't give any resource. The number on each tile is what number has to be rolled in order for that resource to be produced by that tile. So for example, um, you roll two dice. If you get a three and a five, then this wood tile here, the one with the eight on, and this wool tile will both produce a resource depending on it you get a resource if you have a settlement on that tile so if we put a settlement here um, and a road here if an eight was rolled we would get one wood now the aim of the game is to get 10 points and you can see the ai is just all going full out here um Aim of the game is to get 10 points. How do you get points? You get one point per settlement you have, which are these little houses. Uh, you get two points per city. So a city is an upgraded settlement. Uh, you, There are victory point cards, which you can draw from a stack, but I think it's like a, a one in five chance or something to get one of those. And there, are, you get two points for having the longest longest road which is total at least five roads in a row um and the longest of any player and also largest army you get two points for uh which is having played at least three night cards and having played the most night cards uh, of any player so a lot to take in if you haven't played this before it is um it's it's how do I say kind of expansive if you're so there are many many options you can you can take there's trading as well so um, I, I guess we can kind of just get a sample game going I'm not really going to think about it too much but you can see we've got some resources here we would roll the dice um, that was a six rolled so orange and green both got one ore um, and what's the other six there we go Orange also got one sheep. Now on your turn, after you've rolled the dice, you can then use your resources to build a road or a house or a city um, or get a development card. Now development cards, there are different types. They can do different things. Um, that's not super important right now. You can also trade. So for example, if I wanted a brick, uh, I can say I'll give away one ore for one brick and see if anyone, no one has any brick. That makes sense, okay. 
Um, what do they, they have ore? So can I trade a wheat for an ore? Will anyone do that? And there you go. Orange has said, yep, I'll do that trade. So we can trade a wheat for an ore. Obviously, they don't have to accept the trade. So in the game, you kind of have to give fairly favorable trades. Um, and that's pretty much it. You know, that's, that's the majority of the game. You trade, you try and um, build settlements and cities. So settlements will give you one of each resource they're connected to uh, when it's rolled. Uh, if this was a city instead, uh, this would give two resource, two resources for the tile that's rolled. So you kind of want to have a, a spread of numbers that you're on. So obviously you can't guarantee what numbers are going to be rolled, but since there are two dice, uh, eights and sixes are going to be rolled more often than twelves and twos. So that's what's represented by the, the dots uh, on the number is how often they get rolled. There is also uh, sevens, obviously, but you cannot see a seven on the board. That is because when you roll a seven, the robber comes into play. So when you roll a seven, you get to move the robber. When the robber is on a tile, that tile won't produce any resources. So you can effectively block people on that tile from getting the benefit of that tile. So you get to move the robber, you move the robber onto a tile, and then you can also steal one random card from a player on that tile. Anything I've missed? I have missed these ports here. Um, so at any time, you can trade four of one type of resource to the bank uh, in return for one card of any resource. So for example, I could trade, not right now, but if I had two more ore, I could trade four ore and get back whatever I wanted, like a, a lumber, uh, they call it lumber here, wood, brick, whatever. Um, however, four to one is quite a bad trade. So if you are on one of these three to one ports, if you had, have a settlement there, um, then you can trade three of one resource for one of another. So a slightly more favorable trade. There are also resource specific ports where you can do two to one trades, but it has to be of the type of the port you're on. So for example, if uh, we were, if we had a settlement on this two to one ore port, then we could trade these two ore resources for whatever we wanted. And the final thing I think that I think I've missed uh, is you have to, when you're building um, a road or a, a settlement, um, it has to be connected to what you've already put down. You can't build a settlement one space away from another settlement. So for example, between this 8, 5 and 10 here, you can't build one there because both this blue and this red uh, are adjacent to it. However, you could build one here. Uh, and my turn is right now. So, oh yeah, there you go. Somebody's rolled a 7, they put it on the 6. And you can kind of see how that works. Um, to build roads, it has to be either from a road you put down. So I could put one here, I could put one here, um, here, here, and on these tiles as well. Um, you have to build a settlement at the end of a road, or so if I had roads here, here, and here, um, I could build one. Oh, you can move it around. Um, I could build one here because it's on my road and also not adjacent to another settlement. Uh, however, you can, uh, so you can't kind of place over other people's roads. Um, you can also block people off. So if you can't place a road through another player's settlement, for example, I can place a road, I can place a road here, I can place a road here, but I can't then place one here because it goes through this green settlement. Anything I've missed? I'm trying to think. Probably. And oh, cities over. I, did I say that? Cities overwrite um, houses. So you have to have a, a settlement to uh, place a, a city down. Glyn Burton, hello. How are you doing, dude? I've just been explaining the rules of Catan for anyone who doesn't know already. Um, I think I've covered them all. Have you played 
Catan before. I got introduced to it, uh, I went on a holiday to the Lake District with some friends and they introduced me to Catan. We played it all holiday, it was fantastic. Just, I can't believe I've never played it before. Really fun game. Quite, um... Uh... <laughs> quite competitive, and... Yeah, it's, uh, it can, it can cause some arguments, but... It's very fun. Probably give you the name you know me by. I... Yes, that would be helpful. I did wonder, because I, I didn't announce this stream. Um, also, I haven't streamed for... Seven months? Eight months. Over eight months, I think. I just thought I'd go live, do some coding streams. And on YouTube rather than Twitch as well, so it's a bit out of the blue. Think a bunch of numbers. Oh, that could be anyone. <laughs> oh, is it... Um... No, I don't know. Go on, tell me. Reveal yourself. But in essence, that is Catan. So we're going to try and program that. I think today is going to be more of a planning stream. I've done a bit of planning, um, but I think it might be good to get everything written down on stream somewhere. I don't know whether to use like paint or something or or GIMP, or just do it in Notepad. Notepad may actually just be the easiest thing. Honestly. We will see. Um, right. I might just, I don't know whether to just keep this game of Catan up or, no, I'll close it down. Um, get Notepad open. No ad blocker. Um, I've never purposefully installed an ad blocker. I think Firefox may have one, because I use Firefox, I think it may have one installed by default, but um, I don't know. No, I, I do see a lot of ads, so but I'm honestly, I don't care too much. I don't, not too bothered by them. Not enough to go to the effort of installing an ad blocker anyway. Is this Killer? I remember Killer had a lot of uh, numbers at the end of their name. It's actually the only person I can think of who does. Potentially. Right, let's think about um, the pieces of Catan. So I do actually have these written down in a notepad. Um, can I do like an easy, will it auto format a, like a list style for me? So we're going to have to think of literally all the pieces because we're going to have to code all of these. So we've got two dice. Um, it's not going to auto -form format it for me. We have the board itself. Uh, we have the tiles. We have the resource cards. We also have the development cards of which there are different types which do different things um, so I think that would be quite fun to code those uh, settlements cities c cities we've got c no that's not how you spell cities uh, cities there we go we've got roads we have robber did post my name did it not come through it did not. I don't know why. No, all I can see is hello. Should probably give you the name you know me by. Think a bunch of numbers. Also, no ad blocker. And I did post my name. Did it not come through? That's all I can see. Uh, Robert, we've got the players themselves. Kind of more of a more of an abstract object, I suppose. But you know, the players are still going to have properties of some sort, I'm pretty sure. Guess YouTube really hates my name then. It is iKiller. That that may be why. Maybe uh 
maybe they were just like, no, this is a bad word. <laughs> we cannot display the word killer in chat, although it's come through there. Good to see you there, dude. How have you been? And thank you for popping along as well. Players, we've got the ports. Um, we have the tile numbers. We have, so I mean, the tile numbers will probably just be a, a single property, but we're not going to think about that quite yet. I think we just want to get all the pieces down and then we can decide what are going to be um, actual like models um, and what are just going to be properties of those models. Uh, we have the longest road card. We have the uh, largest army card. And we have uh, the the game itself. I mean, you could have multiple games running at once. So the um, kind of aim of this project, I think, is I want to make a web API for Catan, which essentially will allow any front end to implement the game um, just by calling the API endpoints. That is, uh, I haven't completely thought about it too much, uh, but that is the aim. I can't think of anything that would stop that. The only thing I thought is, yeah, the, the only thing I thought was, uh, nothing apparently. It's all left my brain. Something about, no, my mind's just gone blank. You ever have those moments? Just lose the flow? Let me have a sip of coffee and try and think about it. Yes, that was it. Um, actually, kind of the visualization of it. Because this is going to be more of a back-end project. And, you know, if you've worked on a back-end before, there's not much... Uh, attractive visualization you can do. That's all front-end stuff. I am not a front-end developer. Um, I, <laughs> my visually creative skills are pretty lackluster. So it would, I, I'm not really sure what to do about that because it would be nice for you guys to have something to visualize what's going on a bit more. Um, so maybe I can, I might be able to, when we've got some structure going, um, and like, I don't know, an endpoint or two to visualize the board, um, I might be able to make some kind of basic front end uh, to actually display what's going on. That account has been, that account's been shadow banned for some reason. What have you been up to? What have you done to get yourself shadow banned? Um, have you heard about the coding rules that NASA use? No, I haven't. Um, are you, are they kind of straightforward to explain over chat? I was saying earlier, I want to put a focus on clean architecture or clean coding um, and potentially test-driven development as well. Posting clips from when I'm playing games. I mean, isn't that what everyone on YouTube does? Catan pieces, that should be all the Catan pieces. What about the actions that we can take? Uh, quite a lot of these. Thankfully, oh. I wrote these all down before I had planned to do this as a stream project. Uh, un unfortunately, uh, I wrote them down in a notepad and not a digital notepad. Place settlement. No, place just a single one. And um, place initial settlement because that is slightly different because it doesn't have the constraints of having to be at the end of a road. Uh, you can place the initial one anywhere, although you still can't place it uh, adjacent to another settlement. 
Um, I think one of the... Oh, there, set ports. I can't read my writing. I think one of the toughest things that we're going to encounter today, which I haven't fully sorted out, is how to actually represent the, the board structure. Because it's a hexagonal board, you have the hex itself uh, is important because that's what type of resource it is um, and what number needs to be rolled for that resource to be produced. But you also have the points of the hexagon, the, um, the vertices. Um, that's where you can place settlements and cities. But the edges of the hexagons are where you place roads. So this is going to be, it might be quite complicated to represent. We're going to have to think of uh, a nice way of doing this. Um, one, one thing I did figure out uh, is for the vertices, you can kind of flatten the, um, the grids, the hex grids. So um, I've put the picture away now, but you can kind of flatten it into a, it was like a something by something grid like a six by eleven grid or something um just a you know like a rectangular grid um and it all still connects up properly but you've with that six by eleven grid you do have some redundant uh positions that don't actually match up to the hex but the 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 inside ones do so we might be able to make that work um sets ooh, set tile numbers um they're easy to understand just hard to explain because i've forgotten the wording that was used uh the power of 10 rules for developing safety critical code i don't think this is going to be safety critical <laughs> but um oh there we go avoid complex flow constructs such as go to and recursion yes that makes sense uh, all loops must have fixed bounds uh, this prevents runaway code. Yes, that makes sense as well, because you don't want to get stuck in an infinite while loop by accident. Avoid heap memory allocation. This uh, this seems quite low level, which I suppose makes sense, because uh, if you're doing something safety critical, you want to know exactly what's going on rather than using a high level language to... That it kind of does a lot behind the scenes that you don't have control of. Restrict functions to a single printed page. I agree. I can't say that I've always done that. Um, <laughs> however, I am trying to. Um, I am putting, I've been putting more focus on breaking down functions into smaller functions, um, cleaning them up, refactoring them, and making them nice and readable. Use a minimum of two runtime assertions per function. I do. I have not used runtime assertions, um, but I suppose that makes sense because then you're doing less processing per function. Is it per function? Yeah, per function. Restrict the scope of data to the smallest possible. Uh, yes. Um, I suppose that reduces interdependencies. I'm just a junior programmer, please. <laughs> Check the return value of all non-void functions or cast to void to indicate the return value is useless. Right, so... you want, Oh yeah, because you, you don't want... Um, something that should be returning something uh returning null so if yeah if you want it to return a string or something and then it returns null that can cause issues so you want to do a null check after it comes back um all cast to void to indicate the return value is useless i suppose that's more to help other programmers looking at it just so they don't go oh this isn't actually using the value that's returned we should probably use that Whereas um, your original intention was to just not use it at all. Um, although in that case, maybe you need a new function that returns void instead. Very situational, I think. 
Use the preprocessor sparingly. Um, I'm not going to pretend I know uh, what that's for. Limit pointer use to a single dereference and do not use function pointers. So otherwise I think it gets too complicated to know what's going on. Um, again, I've only used pointers when I did C programming in university. Um, I haven't really used a lot of them. Uh, C sharp, you don't really need to specifically use them. Um, compile with all possible warnings active. All warnings should then be addressed before release of the software. Yeah, I suppose warnings are there for a reason, not to be ignored like most of us do. Um, if it's red, it's bad. If it's orange, it's green. <laughs> Voids as in it just gets deleted. So, uh, yes, but surely you just use a void return type instead of. I mean, if you're reusing a function that it doesn't make sense to to return a, I don't know. I reckon you could probably just rewrite it if you've if you've written it well and don't have a 500 line long function then it shouldn't be a problem to just write like a similar function that returns void but i, I suppose you could just not use the return type as well that's true these rules were made for when sending something like a rover into space because you can't patch the code from Earth when it's on Mars. Yeah, exactly. You can't do a, a quick bug fix when it's up there. <laughs> that must be awful though. You know, you've sent this expensive rover up to space and you're looking through your code afterwards and you're like, oh shit. <laughs> oh no, I've seen a bug. Like... You've got to own up to it, obviously. You've got to say, this is a problem. Um, what can we do about it? But in that case, I imagine the answer is just like, cry, you know? What can you do at that point? Nothing really. Which just makes clean code and quality code in the first place so much more valuable. Right, set tile numbers. Uh, we can place a city, which is basically upgrading a settlement. Um, we can buy a development card. We can offer trade. We can accept a trade, accept trade offer. Uh, we can reject. Trade offer. Uh, how's the how's the sound, by the way? Because uh, as you can see, I'm not really using my previous OBS setup. I just made a new scene collection and everything, and honestly, just bare minimum. Um, but I had to redo the sound as well. So hopefully, you can. I'm assuming you can hear me fine. Music's not too loud. Reject trade offer. Fine, at least no issues for me. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, we can move the rubber. I don't know how long I'm going to stream for either. Um, I don't mind streaming for a while. I think that's what I like about coding is when I get into it, I will just go for, go for ages. Um, I also don't know, because I would, I'm obviously planning to pick up the streaming schedule again. Um, I do not know what days I'm going to be streaming. Um, weekends I can do, preferably, it'll almost definitely be Sundays. Um, it may end up being embargo. Um, may end up being Sunday evenings for me, because it's currently I started at 11 a.m. Um, I may end up doing like uh, starting at 6 p.m. on Sundays because if I want to do it during a weekday, 
my working hours are 10 till 6. So I would have to do it 6 till 8 or something on a weekday. And personally, I'd rather keep the times of the streams consistent. But we'll see. Something for me to th think about. Uh, we can steal a card from player uh, when we move the robber. And we can discard cards. That's another rule I forgot to mention. If you roll a seven, um, or if a seven gets rolled, any player with more than seven cards has to discard half of them rounded down, or at least that's how we played it. We rounded down. So if you had nine cards, you had to get rid of four of them. Just lose half a day from messing with code. Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> Why isn't it working? Oh, I've forgotten decimal place. <laughs> I've forgotten exclamation mark. Yeah, no. That hasn't happened to me, never. I remember doing that with my uni dissertation project. Um, like, oh, is it my dissertation project? No, it's one of my third. Is it my second year project, maybe? Yeah, it was second year project. Um, and I was looking through the code after the, the lab we'd done. I was like, this, I'm certain this should be working. And I think I had a greater than sign. Uh, that should have been a less than sign, or it was like a greater than and it should have been greater than equal to, something like that. Just looking, looking at mod collections for Skyrim uh, Special Edition. I, I've got this like reaction um, bubble and it keeps covering the last message that comes in. Um, mod collections for Skyrim Special Edition and one is 68 gigabytes. Another one is 153 gigabytes. It's just insane. I mean, I suppose... When you've got, uh, you know, industry-produced games that are like 60 gigabytes, they will have been compressed a lot. Um, whereas I think mods, you know, not so much thought goes into actually compressing them um but that's still a lot <laughs> that's a lot of space to take up i have seen some some pictures and videos of heavily modded skyrim though and it's it is it just turns it into a whole new game that i've never played with particularly that many cod is only about 100 gigabyte without compression without compression i swear it's um uh, more than that when you download it. Well, at least the um, when I downloaded uh, Wars, when I downloaded Warzone, I never played it, but I downloaded it. It was like 120 gigabytes or something. 150 gigabytes, yeah. That's the one. All right, so we have all the pieces. We have all the actions that we can take. Um, so, basically, functions, objects. Doesn't seem like there are that many, but, you know, as I said, I think the board representation is going to be one of the trickiest parts. But I think, yeah, that's what I want to focus on today is getting our objects set up and a good board representation. All right, can I get, um, paint up? Cool, that's bright. So, I can, I now have to draw hexagons. Do, 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 do. Close enough. Do, 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 do. Do. Um, the board itself has three hexagons at the top. I mean, it's it's symmetrical in four directions, but um, or is it? I'm gonna have to get it out. 
don't take that out of context. Um, const.io. Yeah, it, no, it's 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 not symmetrical, but it's kind of you can you can rotate it like I'm guessing. Wait, what's three sixty divided by five? <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four. All right. Or well, three sixty divided by six. Anyway, there's like yeah, you can rotate it like sixty degrees, and it'll be it'll look the same. So I'm not going to draw the whole board, but I'm just going to give you an idea. Oh, it's getting rather squished at this end. So we can place um, settlements. I'm pretty sure I selected color two. Oh, you right click. Okay, I don't use paint that much. We can place settlements at any of these vertices. Right, and the others. Um, I'll do these two as well. This can be represented by two, three, four. Um, Really should have thought of a better way of doing this. This can be represented by a normal array like this. So we've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven points connected up here. And then we've got these nine points connected here. Uh, the only thing we're missing is, well, I suppose we don't really have to think about the connections between the points right now. We just need to represent the points themselves. Um, let's switch the size back down. Mm, that size might be better. Skyrim Special Edition is only 16 gigabytes. It, 15? Is it really only 15 gigabytes? What are you getting out on stream? You're going to have to repeat yourself because I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Sorry, dude. What are you getting out on stream? 14.3 gigabytes, technically. That's pretty impressive that it's so small. So, yeah, I mean, the way I was looking at this is this point, or I suppose this point, essentially, this shape is essentially the same as this, right? Just because these lines are at a different angle doesn't mean they're um, geometrically different. And same with these, like you could... You can connect these like this until it's more of a... a rectangular shape. rubber um, so we could get this is rubber isn't it is that not rubber oh replace it with the background color yeah you can see I don't use um, paint that much so it turns it into 
a shape like this. There we go. Uh, which is essentially what we what we did over here. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we've got seven dots there, and we've got nine below. And the next row would be eleven. So I think I worked it out. It would be like a, a six down by eleven across array, um, and we would just have to. So it adds like extra points there. And those black dots just wouldn't be used. We'd have to make sure nothing could be placed there. No visuals. Oh my god. <laughs> there you go. You can see what I'm doing now. How long has that been on no visuals? I don't know. Thank you for letting me know. Um, you said you were getting something out, then stated not to take it out of context. So that's what I did. Pretty long. Yeah, it is pretty long. <laughs> um, yes, so that's, I mean, unfortunately, my um, amazing description of turning a hexagonal board into a flattened array was not captured, but you can see the final result. Um, what I was saying was basically like, if this was a, a hexagon shape where the settlements could be placed on the red dots. If you ignore this bit, and this bit, you can turn it into this, like more of a rectangular shape. Um, and that's how we're going to rep represent where you can place the settlements, I think. Um, now, if we if we think about it, because we've got to represent where the roads can go as well, and actually storing the roads. What is a road except a connection between two points? So, would it potentially be better to represent the roads as? two points in this array rather than having a whole separate array for the roads the only thing we've got to think about is actually I mean we've got to for the longest road we've got to calculate which road or which roads are connected and of the same type um, and unbroken I suppose But that should still be possible, as long as we've got the information stored somewhere. Um, thing is, would we have like a, a 1D, one dimensional list? Um, I suppose a, it would be a two dimensional list, one or a many by two shaped array where each element has the, has two points representing where the road is um or two coordinates hmm because if we have this six by eleven array do we want to make it a one-dimensional array so that index zero is here and then we have index 11 here and basically just completely flatten it out and then do calculations to determine um I mean do we even do we need a 2D array? Hmm maybe. It might make it easier to have a 2D array. Um or we have like top left is zero 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 and then next one down is um zero one and the one across is one 
zero and do it like that. In which case, if we were to store uh, a road from here to here, we would have to store the coordinates one, zero, zero, one, and that would be the representation of a road. In which case, um, we could just make, we might be better off making a road object We have a road object which has a point 0.1 and a point 0.2, which are both coordinates. But then it, it becomes difficult to access those when we actually want to, or it com becomes quite tricky to access those or complicated um, when we want to determine, for example, if we can place a road somewhere we would have to check every road in the list to see if it's already at those coordinates. Whereas if we had, for an exam for example, we had an array of roads where the array uh, indexes were the road positions, we could go, for example, okay, I want to put a, a road at index 3, 5. We could just go to the, straight to the array at index 3, 5, and if there's a road there, we go, no, you can't put it there. If there isn't, you can go, yeah, sure. Um, although, obviously, you'd have to check. Um, well, actually, yeah, that, it's another problem, because you've got to check that there is a connecting road or settlement. Um, so maybe having a separate array just for roads would be better. Hmm. Yeah, I think now we've got a, I'm pretty sure that's the right direction to go, the most sensible direction to go. The problem we've got now is figuring out how to store that information in an array, bearing in mind if we make another quick diagram. We have one, two, three, four, five, six roads up here, all connecting to each other. But we also have these roads in between as well. So we could have an array that goes, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and then we have to go like six, Seven, where seven can't be one. Eight, nine, where nine can't be one. Ten, eleven can't be one, and twelve. Um, seems quite messy. Again, we can make it a two D array as well, so we can say um, if it's on an odd y value uh, or odd y value and. No, because then we can't say odd x value. We'd have to put some like weird conditions in there, which I think is unavoidable, really. So I say weird, it's just the just the properties of the board, really. But this is almost vital to get as good as we can because this will affect how <laughs> how complicated or simple everything else is to program.
Maybe we leave the roads for now and we'll think about those later. Hmm. Should we just start? Let's just start programming or working out what objects we need from these pieces. So dice, um, that can be property. Essentially, that's just a value um, or two values, I suppose, that are randomly generated when we want to roll the dice. Uh, the board, that is definitely going to be an object. Uh, tiles, tiles are going to have to be objects, I think. And what property is a tile going to have? It's going to have the type of resource it is. It's going to have the number that produces it. So that's not going to move around. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so that's going to be an object. Resource cards. Um, I mean, that's just going to be a property. Well, you know, um, that'll just be what in what resource cards a player has. It's just going to be an array of an enum, I suppose where the enum represents what type of card it is. Um, or could we have a... Might be better off as a, something like a dictionary, actually, where you have uh, the value or the type of card as the key and the value is how many of those cards you have. Yeah, that makes more sense. Um, let's just add that in there. Um, property dictionary question mark development cards again that can be as above because you have certain types of those and a number of each although having said that not quite true ha because there is an extra rule, which is you cannot play a development card on the turn that you pick it up. So how are we going to represent that? Because you could make an object that's a development card, you can have the type, and is playable or yeah but mm, yeah, that would work i suppose because then um when as soon as each turn ends Or as soon as your turn starts, really, you can go through the player's uh, development cards and say, if this development card is not playable, make it playable. Because you know, if they already have it and it's come around to the start of their turn, then it's been at least one turn since they picked, up, picked it up, so they would be able to play it. Um, that would work. But then you'd have to have a separate object for each development card and store those objects in an array, which is acceptable, I think. Yeah. Um, development card, we will say object. We may change some of these when we actually come to putting them in, but that's fine as long as we've got a good idea of what we're doing. Uh, settlements property no yes yes or enum no yes 
they, they are a property of the board, but uh, needs to store color. Uh, as above, as above, robber. That again is just a number or um, a coordinate specifying what tile the robber is on. Um, yes, I think. Yeah, I think that can just be a property. Or. No, that's fine. Yeah, we. I mean, the robber's only going to be in one place, so you can just have the coordinates and kind of store that with the board itself. Um, and every time you go to pay out a resource, first check that that resource is not the robber coordinates, and if it is, then pay out. Uh, don't pay it out. Oh, Nat, how are you doing, dude? I know it's been so long. <laughs> it's actually been. I mean, it is eight months today since I started my job, um, which is when I stopped streaming. So it has been over eight months since I last streamed. Hope you're well. I'm doing really well, thank you. How are you doing, dude? Um, if you haven't worked it out already, uh, we are doing some programming. We are going to make a game of Catan. I don't know if you played Catan before. Very fun game. Um, but it may take us a little while to program. Players, the players themselves, that is definitely going to be an object because we're going to need to store for each player their cards um, and their points, etc. Ports are again properties. I th oh, that's a good point. Um, a port. Ha will always have two adjacent vertices on a hexagon that connect to it. So, um, I think a port might be better off as hmm. I mean, you could represent a port in the same way that we could represent a road, which is um, by two points, the two points that road connects to, or the two points the port connects to. Um, but you also need the type of port, which I suppose with the road, you need the type of road or the color of the road as well. Um, all right, we'll keep that as a property property for now. Very well, thanks. Hope your job is going well. Uh, it is, thank you. Going very well. I hope yours is going well too. Can't stay long as rubbers are kicking off in two minutes. Understandable. I know what your priorities are. <laughs> it's good to see you, dude. Um, and good luck as well. I hope they win. Uh, tile numbers. That, again, property property of a tile. Longest road card property. That is a property of the board, I want to say, because you can have which player has the longest road card. Yes. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And then each round you're going to have to test to see or well, each each time a road is placed, you can see, can check the other players to see if it's longer than theirs, and if it is, then they get the longest road card by setting the property on the board to that player. Same with the largest army card, and the game itself is going to be almost certainly an object. Um. Well, I suppose the, the game is going to contain stuff like the players, the board. The, 
the game and the board are the two main objects. So the game has a game board. The game has one game board. And the board has tiles. The board is also going to have, I suppose, a, uh, a settlement map. and a road, a road map. Okay. Right, that's pretty good. Um, we can start coding now. So with that, I'm gonna take a quickly break and I will be back in just a moment. Hello, I'm back. Let's do some programming. So I've got this uh, solution set up here with some projects within it. We've got the API set up. I've split them all into a clean architecture sort of pattern. Um, so we'll start with the domain where we put all of our objects. Um, now I know with true domain driven design uh, you're not meant to have any simple properties and um, they should all be objects however I don't think it's that big of a deal for this project in particular so let's start with um, what shall we start with we start big with game or do we start small well <laughs> I say start small start small with tile maybe start small with tile um, Catan tile um, right what do we might end up restructuring some of this later but for now I think this is fine right what do we need for Catan tile let's um put that over there Is that in that's 
Ah, come on. Right, put that there. Get all my windows up because they just all closed. That. It looks really weird. Oh, it's because help has gone down to the second line. Okay, that'll do. Um, Tan tile, what do we need? We need, uh, we should have said what properties these are of. Um, a tan tile has a tile number and a tile type. So we're also going to need some enums, uh, which I think for now we will just put in here. Public enum um, resource type. I'm going to say specify tan resource type. And yeah, we'll have unknown. We will have um, woods. That's one. Uh, we will have brick equals two. We will have sheep equals three. We'll have wheat equals four. And we will have ore equals five. So the tan tile. I think. Really, we want to make these private properties and have accesses for them to make it as clean as possible. So we're going to have a private uh, town resource type type. I think technically you're meant to have a, a standard. You're meant to have a uh, underscore in front of private properties. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. Um, honestly, I don't really like how it looks, but I'm just gonna leave private properties as having a lowercase first letter. Um, we're also gonna have private um, number. We'll call it like a, uh, so it's gonna be an integer. Activ activation number. That makes sense. I think, I mean, I don't really think we need to store the position of the Catan tile in the tile itself. I don't think that's relevant. I think we'll store the tiles in a 2D array. So like a five by five array, I guess. And then the, again, the corners are going to be sort of empty. So yeah, one of the, one of the big problems we're gonna have is mapping between coordinates of different tile boards and settlement boards and road boards if we end up going down that route. I think that's all the Catan tile needs. It's just these two, it's just a type and an activation number. And then, let's make the constructor private as well. Uh, this takes a resource type type and int activation number and then we just set this dot type equals type this dot activation number equals this dot activation number uh, and then we're also going to want public um, create This static tan tile. No, hang on. I don't actually know if we want this public. Maybe this is just um, internal fields because we don't want any 
derivatives of this um Hmm. Can't be static and sealed. That makes sense. Um, maybe we just, for the sake of it, just make this public. That's probably the easiest way of doing it. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Expression number, that's fine. We are going to have to find a method to um, distribute the activation numbers properly. But that's going to be something, we don't want to do that per tile because the tiles numbers essentially need to know about each other. So uh, you, you have a set number of each number um, or each activation number. So you almost always have two eights, two sixes. Um, in fact, I think it's two of every number um, except two and 12. Two and 12, you only have one each of. Um, so we just, when we're setting it up, we'll need to have a list of those numbers and distribute them between all the tiles so we don't have any repeats. I think that's, all right, well, Maybe want to public um, get get type, or is that? Um, oh, we'll need to actually return the can resource type get type. Don't know if that overwrites an existing method. Yes, it does. Get file type. And that just returns type. Activation number, return activation number. Um, I don't think we will ever need to set either of these because they should only be set when we create the tile. Oh, actually we need a uh, tan resource type Desert as well. Well, should this be Catan tile type then? No, we'll 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 keep it as resource type because we can use. I suppose technically we can reuse that for the card types as well. Card resource types, except you can't get a desert card. Um. So we'll just have to make sure. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. That that is that's fine. We'll just have to make sure we put something in place to make sure <laughs> player can't accidentally get a desert card. Uh, but I think that is the Catan tile done. Um, so we can actually. I do have a Git repo repo git repository set up on github um, which i will put in the description at some point um, so you can all have a look um you know why i just like there we go having that little extra line at the bottom um it's tan tile model we're just going to commit everything to dev right now uh, I've got a main and dev branch set up just for convenience later. Not that they actually do anything at the moment, uh, but eventually, hopefully they'll we'll set up some um, automatic deployment to somewhere or other, or maybe we'll just keep it local. We'll see. Right, Catantile is done. Let's add. Class, um, do Catan board. So this is where it starts getting 
a little more complicated. Uh, internal this can be sealed as well. So we have done use tiles um ten board. What are we gonna need? We need oh or maybe we should make the player next. Because the board uses players. Okay, well we've made the we've made the board class now, so we'll continue with this. What do we want? We want a an array. I'll do a list of Catan tile. Do we want a how do you do a two by two array? It's, well a two by two list. It's like that, isn't it? Um tiles. Is that not how you do a two by two list? No, it's not. Do you have to do a list within a list? That's definitely not. <laughs> hmm. Something doesn't look right here. Is it just a list, with, a list of lists of Catan tiles? That's it, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Um, new double list. Do we even need to use a list? Because I suppose maybe an array would be better. Uh, but you can kind of... I know arrays are probably more efficient, but you can do more things with lists. Um, also going, going to want a board... Do we want a board size? So obviously, obviously the standard board uh, is kind of like a three at the top, four, five, four, three. Um, But we could change the size of the board eventually. We won't do that for now, I think. We'll leave it leave it as a fixed setup. When you think you accidentally deleted Windows stupidly placed boot partition, so now you gotta make a backup external drive with a Windows installer on it. Good going. That's not fun. <laughs> I don't envy you there. Honestly, doing stuff with that can affect like the operating system um, or the actual, you know, boot drive and everything. I I try and steer, steer clear of it. Kind of scares me. I semi know what I'm doing, but there's always that that risk that's like, if I mess this up, uh, it's not going to be a fun time. Windows main drive equals C drive, so it installs. I've got that thing covering it again. Oh, it installs boot drive on the E drive. Why? What what are you what are you trying to do? Oh, my coffee is very much cold. Right, okay, let's not worry about the list too much right now. Um, just because I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to look at it right now. 
Um, what else does a board have? The board, oh, it also has a uh, a list of, a list of, um, no, that's not what I was looking for, not a listener. Um, a list of, a list of, uh, I mean, cities. Um, I guess for now we can have a public, um, enum, uh, and a player color. Do we need a color? Uh, I suppose color will just make it easier to, um, to represent it. What colors are usually used? There's red, blue, orange, and green. So we can have none equals zero, um, red equals one, blue equals two, green equals three, and yellow equals four. There we go. So we'll have a list of a list of Catan player color. So we can determine what is on. Hmm. But we also want to know if it's a city or just a settlement. Oh. Maybe we need a Catan building object. Yeah, I think we might need to. Because it will have a type which will be none road, settlement, city, and a color as well. Okay, yeah, we'll have a, let's make a Catan building. Catan building. Uh, I had a dual boot with Linux. Oh, always fun. <laughs> Haven't touched it since before your last stream on Twitch and I need more storage space. So I wanted to remove that and get it all back. Oh, I do not envy you. Um, I, my work laptop, I set it up uh, dual boot with Linux. I have not touched the Linux part of it at all. I just use Windows for everything. Um, but the Linux is 750 gig gigabytes used, or, you know, partition size. And Windows is just 250, so... I would like to just get rid of Linux entirely and just keep it Windows. However, um, I don't really want to mess about with it too much, honestly. I was just going to yeet that data to the void, aka format. Yes. Right, so it's... Essentially, you've got a, a um, bit of Windows stored there that means you can't just format the Linux partition. Is that right? Um, private, uh, we want let's get this Catan player color. Um, I would, oh, that's a bit weird. Uh, I would like to move these like enums to a, um, a common folder or a common area in at some point, common namespace. But for now, we'll just leave them where they are. Um, private, town player color, um, color, and private, uh, want a public enum, tan building type. None, um, road equals one, settlement equals two, and city equals three. There are no other building types we need. Have a tan building, building type, building type. 
and play. And we'll just make a public constructor for it. Uh, can building color and a type. Perfect. That is all we need for that. That's not ah. That's not what I wanted to open. Okay. No, please go away. When you press the wrong key bind and fifty windows open. Let's commit that. Um, add building model. That's right, isn't it? Yep. Okay, back to the Catan board. So we have a list of a list of uh, Catan building which is settlements and cities <laughs> hmm I'm not sure I particularly like that could call it not roads um, we also need a list of, a list of tan building building Roads. Hmm. I mean, that's fine, I guess. Um, each of these are going to need very specific logic for making sure we don't uh, set anything where it shouldn't be and as I said mapping between them that's going to be that's going to be difficult hmm. so I'm I'm fairly new to the clean architecture um, architecture so it's going to take me a little while still to kind of get a grip on where or what should go in the domain layer and what should go in the application slash use case layer. Um, if you don't know what clean architecture is, essentially it's a way of reducing dependencies that shouldn't be there. Um, so all of the business um, objects um, should be in the domain layer. Um, so they're, they're the things that you are always going to need for your application. For example, like the board and the tiles. I mean, whatever we do, we are going to need those. The application layer is actually using those models, using those objects. Um, so the application, uh, the, the main objects or the domain layer doesn't know about anything in the application layer um, but the application layer knows about the domain objects you also have infrastructure and API uh, so external dependencies like you know third-party um, APIs and actually your own API they should know about your application logic and your domain objects but your application logic and your domain objects shouldn't rely or shouldn't know about any of the external infrastructure because that doesn't matter you just you essentially have interfaces that say I need something that um, that does this that you know it stores this in a database um, I don't care how it's stored or what database you use uh, I just need to store it in a in the database we're using um, and then you will have in your for example, infrastructure layer, you'll have the implementation of that interface that says, okay, we're going to use uh, whatever SQL database um, and 
when this method is called, this is the actual logic to store it in this specific day space. And then if you go, oh, actually, I don't want to use this day space anymore, you can easily switch it out because um, the, the logic in the application and domain layer isn't specific to that SQL database. Putting the new, on the new install on the USB now. Good luck. I hope it works. Right, what else do we need for the board? The robber. We need to know private um, Do we have a, I feel like we need a coordinates object. Can we use a record for that? Let's try. I haven't really used records before. I think they're fairly new. Um, and coordinates. Oh, well, let's just, let's just do coordinates. A coordinate or coordinates? Coordinates. Coordinates. Um, actually, so if we do internal sealed record coordinates, and then we can do int x, int y. Right, that should work. Private, uh, no, not lists, uh, coordinates. Robber position. So we could do that and then we can do Robber position dot x. Yes, okay. Um, okay, cool. That's that's pretty neat to use um, a record like that that kind of simplifies things when you just build it like that. So you've got coordinates which have all they have is an x and a y position, and you can use those. So we don't want to set that to new coordinates quite yet. Um, uh, coordinates null? Oh, when it's exiting the constructor. Okay, that's that's fine. Um, public tan board. No, you know what? Talk, there we go. Proper position equals new coordinates um, and then we'll have to just specify a random but the, mm. we'll come to that later we'll come to that later we'll just leave the um, the warning there about this needing a non-null value value when exiting, exiting constructor that's fine Let's get the rest of the properties in, if there are any. So we've got settlements and cities that can be on one board because that all kind of lines up. Is there any way... Is there any way we can put all the buildings on one... in one array? Let's go back to our diagram. Sorry for the flashbang. No, because you can't have, it would, I feel like it would be way too complicated because you can only have settlements and cities on the vertexes. You can only have roads on the, on the edges. And some roads connect between layers. 
Oh, why does it have to be a hexagonal board? Why can't it just be rectangular, like a chessboard? Or square? It does make it more of a challenge. That's why I wanted to get kind of that sorted um, before we started, but we didn't get it sorted. Uh, we chose to ignore it. Ports, right, yes. Uh, <laughs> hmm. I believe the list of ports are going to have to be a list of Hmm. No, we're going to need a another object, I think. Catan port. Enum a uh, Catan port type. Uh, none. We can have a three, two, one. Uh, and then we have one for each of the resources. Maybe just for this, we'll just do like wood, brick, um, do I call it wool? Wool. Tentile. Wood brick. Oh, sheep, I called it. Okay, we'll, we'll go with sheep. Um, wheat and ore. Do I want to keep it sheep? I'm going to change that to wool. No, I like sheep better. <laughs> um, sheep, wheat equals four. And ore equals five. And then we've got three to one equals six. There are all the ports you can have. Um, so we've got a private tan port type. Which is the type. And you've also got private coordinates coordinates. I suppose we can make a few of these read-only as well because they're not going to change. Um, Catan port, we want the Catan port type, which is type, and we want the coordinates. Coordinate. Coordinates. Go. This dot type equals the type that's passed in. This dot coordinates equals the coordinates that's passed in. Perfect. Get all of those. Um, these can, yeah, these can also be read only. Tiles can be read only. Um, settlements and cities, roads, rubber position, they are all going to change. You can also set private read only list of and port. Ports. So we are kind of mixing up uh, our representations because this is just going to be a list of ports and each port is going to contain its coordinates. Whereas the tiles, settlements and cities and the roads, they do not store their own coordinates. Their coordinates are stored inherently by their position in the array. Which, hmm, I don't know if I like because it just makes it... It'll make some things easier and some things harder. So there are definitely trade-offs in the way we do this. But I do wonder if it'll be even worse if we mix the styles like we are doing right now again maybe something we can um oh 
Oh, actually, yes, color is read only. Type is not because you can go from a road to a settlement. No, we, we weren't. I was going to write a like a upgrade to city um, method, but we don't really need to do that right now. Let's just get the models in. And I should probably commit some of this. Uh, tan board. Um, tan pork, tan tile. Just say add Catan port model. That encompasses a few other changes, but I think that's fairly normal. <laughs> uh, tile numbers on the board, yeah, done that. Oh, on the tile, sorry. Activation number, that is in. Longest road card, longest army cards, they're both going to be part of the game object. So the board itself, I think, has everything. We just need a... We just need to set up the board now. Now. Do we want to do test-driven development? What's the warning? Oh, the warning will be about the null. Um, so I want a load of metadata can't be found. Eek. I'm sure it's if we build it'll it'll build, right? And then it'll go like, yeah, we don't need those errors. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> uh Rob's position's never used. Uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. We will sort that. I really don't like thinking about the um the way we're doing these board representations. Maybe it would be better to just have a, a simpler. It won't be as efficient though. I'm sorry, I'm not fully explaining myself. Um, you know when you just, your brain goes into overdrive and the words you, what, you, you, what you're thinking just can't come out of your mouth. Um, now I've lost what I was thinking. We could store everything in a single list. I say everything uh, in separate lists, separate one dimensional lists, and each object contains its own coordinates. But then we still need the logic to connect coordinates between each other. For example, this road could have the coordinates 0, 0. Uh, it can connect to 1, 0, and it can also connect to 0, 1. But does that make... Because there are two roads here. There are two... Uh, ooh... Wait, no, because there are only, if you look at this top row that I just drew a line through, uh, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows. This next row, you've got one, two, three, four rows. How do you store that in an array without making a mess of things? And also store which roads are connected to each other. It's an interesting problem. I've never, I've never represented a board like this before. I, they've always been rectangular boards that I've done in the past. May end up being something to sleep on and work out later.
Right, let's let's try just um, going ahead and coding something. So um, if we, hey, ah, hexagon, <laughs> wouldn't you know? Um, can I copy and paste that as well? No. Why can't I? Uh, I don't use paint. Three. So the board is five, five wide. I think we can maybe get rid of everything else up here. <laughs> yes, that worked. Delete that. Delete that. That this shape. This is the the wonkiest board you've ever seen. Right. Kind of works. Um, so for each of these, if we have, um, no, I'm just going to put a dot. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, I guess. Wait, no, we only need. Five. Ah, but these don't, the tiles don't line up, which is kind of annoying. So the maximum you need is a five wide array. I'm just staring at it and my eyes are unfocused. I don't know if it worked. Can you shift everything to the left side? So you have one, Two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, two, three, four, and one, two, three. I suppose it doesn't matter too much because all the tiles are still there. It doesn't matter how the tiles are themselves are connected. In fact, could you could you just have all the tiles in one list? But again, you've got the problem of mapping from the settlements and cities array to this tiles array. So like, how do you work out um, if this tile gets called or activated, how do you work out who's got a settlement on it? Unless there is a way we can, for example, storing per tile, 
the vertices and edges around it, but vertices and edges are shared between tiles. So how do you sort that one out? For example, this point is connected to that point. This one is connected to that point. This point is connected to that one. Connected there, connected there, connected there, and connected there. And it'll be the opposite this way so this one will be connected there this right and same with this so this will be connected here I'm just where's that even oh let's do that one that one goes to there, this one goes there, that one goes there, this one goes in between there. Um, and same, I suppose opposites on this one. I'm just trying to draw things just to get my mind going. See if we can figure something out. So this would be zero, one, Two, three, four, zero, one, two. Do, 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 do. And then you'd need the actual, it would be nice if we had, we could kind of overlay some coordinate systems or something. Um, maybe we do the same with all the, the points as well, just push, push them all to the left. So we have like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, how? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Um, then the next row down would have nine. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, next row down is going to have 11. Close enough. <laughs> Next row down is going to have 11. Next row down is going to have 9. Next row down is going to have 7. So which points here are connected to which tiles here. I think that's what we need to start figuring out. So we have um, row zero, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there. that's a nine, eight. Nine, ten. So four, zero, zero. 
you get points of, um, I'm going to type this out, it's probably easier. Zero, zero. One, zero. Two, zero. One, zero. One, one. And one, two. Is that right? So, wait, no, how I've done these. Two, zero. Zero, one. One, one. One, two, no, two, one. Oh, that should be zero one this way. Zero 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 one zero two zero zero one 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 and two one. No, I just deleted it. <laughs> Can I get it back? Oh, I'm just deleting more things. Let's write that again. Zero zero zero. Um, one, zero, two, zero, zero, one, uh, one, one, and two, one, enter. There we go. Okay. Whew, didn't lose it. So anything that is like how do you how do you map this mathematically what if we had if we choose a random number so like we'll go for three five again which is not <laughs> not on the board <laughs> um okay we'll go for like one three one three this one what does that map to and we also need to map these backwards as well we could there is the option. It's a horrible option, but we could hard code um, the mappings. But I, I, that is a truly last resort. That would be a horrible thing to do. No, we're not doing that. We're finding we're finding some other way to map them. One three uh, is one three is this one. So that is uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, th rows three and four. And columns two, three, three to oh, it's zero, one, two, three, four, two to four. So it's I draw a square. Okay. It is these, these dots. Which, yeah, which are two, three. We've got uh, three, three, and we've got four, three. We've also got. I may have figured, I may have just thought of a way to do this. We've also got two, four. Um, two, wait, through. Yeah, two, four, three, four, and four, four.
So there's a pattern to it, right? Um, which should have been obvious. The only thing we need to do is map the the coordinates of the hexagon to one of these coordinates of the vertices because there's a pattern to these so you add you start with the the first one you add one to the x you add another one to the x then you go back to the original add one to the y then add one to the x then add one to the x So, I mean, again, you can kind of see the pattern here, starting from 0, 0. The first hexagon, hexagon 0, 0, does map to 0, 0. Um, the second hexagon... Uh, 1, 0... ...maps to... What is the top left coordinate of that hexagon? That is going to be zero uh, two zero. Uh, two zero maps to is it uh, six? No, four four zero. Then we've got zero one maps to I think I think it's a multiplicative mapping of some sort. I think he he times the x by two. Zero one. The top left of that is going to be zero one. Yes. Zero. No. One one goes to zero one two two one, right? So it should be on the same row. One two goes to one. Yeah, that's that's right. So the x coordinate is multiplied by 2. The y coordinate is the same as the y coordinate of the hexagon. It's through uh is so this should be 4 2. So one, two, this coordinate should be, that's not four, two. No, because one times by two is two. <laughs> two, two, um, and I'm pretty sure it is. Zero, one, two, um, zero, one, hang on. Now I'm getting lost. Um, zero, one, two. Ah, no, because because we've shifted these and it's confused me. Oh wait, how? One, zero, one, zero, one is that one. One, one is that one. Why have I not done two, one? But these are wrong. Either way. Zero, zero, one actually goes to, zero, one is this one. The top left
is not where I thought it was. Or maybe it is because ah, <laughs> it is. Oh, it's so frustrating. Um, I think I've really confused myself with how I've mapped this out. Unless it doesn't matter. Maybe, maybe it doesn't matter. It really does matter, doesn't it? Ah, no. Right, so I've actually, I see my mistake. It's because this point here is actually that point there, which is where? Unless it doesn't matter. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe maybe none of it matters and we just hope for the best. Um, <laughs> we... That point connects to that point. Why does that point connect to that point? Because they are the same point. That is why. That's very important. Which is why this uh, layout doesn't really work. Maybe it'd be easier looking at this layout. The reason we put it in this layout here, where they're all lined up to the left, is because they don't align properly in a nice grid, or a nice rectangular grid, when they're in the actual board shape. Uh, one dimensional array? Would that be easier? And then we just, we'd also have to map, um, figure out which hexagons are near each other. Although that wouldn't really matter too much. If we just had an array of hexagons, then we'd just be mapping one number um, to coordinates. So that would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, that may, in fact, make it simpler. Or would it? Let's have a look. So. Unless we shift these over and make it so that like zero, zero is a, is not a corner at all. For example, we cover that up, cover that up, that one and that one. Oh wait, no. Just that one and that one. Um, red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three, four, five, six, seven. So we have the array more like that. And then if this is zero, zero, we can say if we delete that, that will delete all these. Um, zero, zero, then maps to the top left is two zero because then one or two one should be yeah that's right okay that makes more sense um let me change that back to black uh two zero um we have Three zero, and we have four zero, and then the next row down we have one two no two one sorry. Time to restart. Wish me luck. Good luck, dude. Um, I hope it all doesn't crash.
because this this one is not part of this hexagon Ooh. oh oh don't do this to me don't do this to me <laughs> okay we'll, <laughs> we'll carry on from here um two one we've got three one and four one Two zero three zero four zero two one three one four one. That's kind of neater. And then if we're doing one three, the hexagon which is down here. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Um then we'll ignore this rectangle. That is one, two, three, uh, one, two, three. Or well, zero, one, two, I suppose. And it's on this one, zero, one, two. Oh, it's the same, I think. It's the same area. Or is it? Because that would be this point here is that point. This point is that point. This point is that point. That point is so this point is one two three ah four or zero one two three so zero one two three so it's actually three three this one starts at and then it should go four three five three um three four Four, four, five, four. The pattern's the same for actually constructing it from the first point. Three, three, four, three, five, three. Yeah, that'll be that'll be right. So the the bottom left one was three, four, which is zero, one, two, uh, which is zero, one, two, which is correct. So if we again do our mapping from uh, the hexagon to first point, we've got zero, zero to two, zero. We've got one, zero, two, um, zero, one, two to four, zero. And we've got two zero two zero one two three four zero one two three four two six zero. We have a zero one goes to one one. One one, which is this one, zero one two, zero one two, that goes to three one. So is this where you add like? Hmm. I think we've still got it. You're back, did not need to reinstall Windows. Let's go. Always a moment of triumph when that happens. 
I think we've still got the relationship. So the Y coordinate of the hexagon is the same as the Y coordinate as the, of the top left vertex of it when we've got this set up. Um, now we just need to find a relationship between the X coordinates. So if we take this hexagon, no, two, Two, zero, why am I doing two zero? Two one, two one, two one. It's this one. Uh, zero one two three four. I think I'm I'm literally saying the relationship. I've just got to put it into numbers. Zero one two three four. That is five one. think I've got it. So it's you add two. No. You add one, then times it by two. And then hmm, no. For so for these you can add one. To the x coordinate and then times it by two. So one plus one is two times it by two is four. Two plus one is three times it by two is six. For these, it is one less. So can you do add one to it times it by two and then subtract the y coordinate? So for example, if we did um, what was our other example? One three. Then you would. Add one. Is there a one three? There is a one three. Add one, which is two, times it by two is four, then subtract the y coordinate three, which gets you to one. No, that's not right. <laughs> oh wait, no, no, it might be. Yeah, it is. Um, and then the the y coordinate is three. One. Oh wait, no shit. Uh, <laughs> no, that is. Right. So one. Th where is? It's actually just the, the same coordinate. Um, one, three, one, three is that one. No, we're one off. Two off. It should be three, three. It's, uh, yeah, it's because of this kind of weird triangular shape that we've done this in. Which means it's not a linear relationship um, between the x-coordinates. If it's zero, you don't subtract anything. Ah, maybe you subtract, you add, you subtract, uh, let's, let's write the rest of the, um, oh, I, I hate paint because you can't edit it now. Um, let's do three, one goes to three one oh no three one is does exist three one is this one um so that is going to be seven one right so that still holds up for our previous rule which was uh add one multiply by two subtract the y coordinate now I can hear Windows wouldn't let audio pass through to my audio device. Oh, well, sounds like you fixed it now. Classic Windows problem. Um, we've now got zero two, which is on the longest row. And that is zero two.
which if you add one, you get one times by two is two, subtract the y coordinate, zero. So that still holds up. Um, and just to check, we'll do, let's do the other end, we'll do four, two. Uh, so this should be eight, two. Um, yeah, that still holds up. So four plus one is five times two is 10 minus the two, which is the y coordinate and you get eight. That still holds up. However, I think if we go to uh, zero three, which is the next row down, so that's uh, this, this one, yeah. Uh, then it doesn't hold up because this top left coordinate is one, three. I believe. So one, yeah, one, three. Two, three, one, three, yeah, one, three. So add one to that, times it by two. Oh, that still holds up, hang on. No, add one to that, it becomes one, times it by two, you get two minus three is minus one. Maybe, ooh, can you just, does that work? Or, no, oh, no, uh, maybe it does. One, three, hang on, I've got one, three, ah, that's because this should be a three here. <laughs> Corrected, there we go. Um, one times, uh, plus one is two, times two is four, minus three is one. Oh, yeah, okay. So it doesn't hold up. Pun intended, I never intend my puns, I wish I did. Maybe I'm just a funny guy. Zero three, uh, so yeah, one three, we know goes to three three. Uh, two three goes to, that would be five three. Three three goes to, wait, is there a three three? There is a three three, isn't there? Three three, that will go to seven three. And then the last row we've got, Zero four goes to two five. One four goes to, and that'll be four five because it always increments by two. And finally two four goes to six, five. Six, five is the right one. So we need to find a relationship between all of these numbers. And this is only for the cities slash settlements and not the roads. So up to uh, these first three rows, we had um, x equals uh, x plus one. And let's let's say x one equals x zero uh, plus one times two minus y zero. And y one was y zero. So that is only, ooh, ooh. 
that is only for x zero is less than three. So I suppose we could just make another mapping for when x uh, zero is greater than two or is greater than equal to three. Just need to figure out what that mapping is. So zero three is so yeah. So we can just cross this one out. I think. Um, why have I done zero two then four two? Zero two. Oh, because I I didn't do that whole row. Okay, that makes sense. Um, oh no, how? It's the for when y zero is that's right. Y zero is less than three. But then we get to zero three and it goes to one three. Um, zero plus one is one times two is two minus three is minus one, not one. So instead, what if we do? Times two plus one? No, that doesn't work. Minus one times two plus y. <laughs> that works. That actually, does that actually work? Minus one times two, that actually works. Uh, equals x zero minus one times two plus y zero uh, for now I haven't actually checked this but um, y zero is greater than or equal to three so let's test it on one of these one four for example so you've got one minus one is zero times two is zero plus four is four, which we got. Wait, why is this five? No, the uh, these should all be four. Okay, well, should be four, not five for these last three, but that's fine. At least we know that still holds up. Um, let's try two. Two minus one is one times two is two plus four is six. That works. Amazing. So this way we can actually map. We have equations to map between them. Only, ah, only one way though. Also, are we going to want to store the, because the, these only need to be calculated once, right? Because if we have an array of um, tiles, cities and settlements and roads, those shapes aren't going to change and the relationships between them aren't going to change. So. And, well, I don't know if it really matters if we just store the the vertex locations of each, vertex and edge locations of each tile. Um, maybe that's a better way of doing it. Oh, I don't know. Oh.
unless we just we could put them all in their own one dimensional arrays and for each tile we could store the one dimensional indexes of roads in the road list and cities and settlements in the cities and settlements list um could we do that but we still need to work out where like what points the roads connects also how did i manage to turn this red i don't remember doing that anyway my head is uh my my head is exploding Once we get past this, once we get this implemented, I'm hoping the rest will be a breeze. It never goes like that, but... One can hope. You know, I'm going to look up if there's a, a easy way to store... Um, <laughs> represent... Catan board in code here we go a simple structure to store a hexagonal grid when you only care about hexagons is a matrix with a hexagon being at x y being a neighbor of hexagons at x y plus one x plus and oh x y plus and minus 1, x plus and minus 1, y, and x plus and 1, x plus and minus 1, y plus 1 for even x's, or x plus and minus 1, y minus 1 for odd x's. We can evolve this idea to allow fast lookup of edges and vertices. You add two other matrices to this one. One for edges and one for vertices. Okay, so yeah, you add two more arrays, right? You consider a hexagon at x, y, delimited by the vertices at positions x, 2, y, x, 2, y plus 1, x, 2, y plus 2, uh, x plus 1, 2, y, x plus 1, 2, y plus 1, x plus 1, 2, y plus 2 for even x's. For odd x's, add 1 to the y coordinate. I'm gonna let you see this um, because there's there's a lot, but this may be a better way of doing it. Use somebody else's idea. So what have they done? They've done an array of hexagons. Uh, yeah, a one uh, two-dimensional array. So they filled a 10 by 10 grid with hexagons. It's a memory inefficiency because a few cells are never used. That's right. So they've they've initialized the hexagons anyway, but they're never used. Um, edges, they've done a 20, 22 by 22. And vert vertices 22 by 22. Why 22 by 22? Where is it? Um, get neighbors. I'll oh, get vertices. 
so if we pick like uh one three again um the hexagon at one three which is one one i don't know it's it's weird how they've done it um How have they done a, a 10 by 10 grid? Why 10 by 10? Do you really need a 10 by 10 grid? Or is that just, maybe that's just an example, but. If you want the neighboring hexagons, the offset. What the hell is this? <laughs> X modulo two. Uh, if that equals zero, then you add one, else you subtract one. Right. Okay. Got it. Um, so if it's even, you add. Um, if the X is even, you add. The offset is one. Uh, if it's odd the offset is minus one so you have the hexagons at x and y plus one so above and below to the sides and then to the right and either up or down one to the left either up or down one So one, th uh, one, three, it would be up one. So those four. And then that one and that one. That's right. So if you think this uh, this one is one three, that is connected to this one, this one, this one, and this one. Those are the ones we did at first, and then they're also connected to those two diagonally there. Um, and the offset was if it's even, you add one. Uh, if it's odd, you subtract one. So this is odd. So you add one to the X and subtract one. Oh, and subtract one from the Y. Yeah, that's right. Add, uh, subtract one from the X and subtract. Oh, was it negative offset? Oh, hang on. Oh no, I'm looking at the wrong place. X minus one, Y plus offset. That should be Y minus offset. I'm pretty sure. I think they've made a mistake there. I think this should be x minus one. And then if the offset is minus one, you subtract that to add one to the y to go down here. So that's how you find all the neighbors if they're in this, this sort of grid. Um, I guess unless they've got just got it like set out differently, but I don't understand how you could have this and this be a neighbor of this one. Along with like I, it would be it would be useful to know where the empty hexagons are in this. but we could use this solution.
One possibility is the brick wall technique, which uses a square grid, square grid with each row offset by half a square from the upper and lower rows. Topologically the same as a hex grid, but easier to use in some ways. If you look at a cube from a 45 degree angle with a corner facing you, you'll see that its silhouette is a hexagon. We can get a lot of mileage by treating hexagons as two-dimensional projections of cubes for algorithmic purposes. Wow, okay. Check out a meets post, okay. Let me just have a look at this. Okay, this looks pretty interesting. Ooh, look at that. Right, so you've got flat top orientation, pointy top orientation. So we're doing pointy top orientation. Um, coordinate systems, there we go. Right, I think this is this is going to be helpful. So we'd have to figure out which of these offsets we'd want to use. Oh wait, cube coordinates as well. Oh, okay. So this uses three coordinates for each, starting at the middle. Is that right? Man, this is very involved. When you got 800 gigabytes plus of data, you need to copy to another drive just because you need to delete the parti partition it's on so you can add more space to it. How, have you started it? How long is it gonna take? Woo! That is, that's a crazy diagram, okay. Oh wow, okay. Oh, it's so... Seven hours? 855 gigabytes. Well, I know what you're doing today. <laughs> Going at 49.8 megabytes per second. Well, it's not the slowest, but I suppose seven hours is pretty good then. This might be the way to go. Zero, right. So that's zero, that's all zero on the Q axis, that's all zero on the R axis. I guess that makes sense. So, if we wanted a three by three, we'd have this as the center. Or oh, if, yeah, three, yeah, it would be three by three. Have this as the center and it would just be this, this section. So how do you define an edge then? Or a vertice?
Because we've still got that problem. Coordinate conversion. Offset coordinates, doubled coordinates, neighbors. Right, so you just give them uh, direction vectors, okay. That makes sense. So each hex has three uh, coordinates with three values. And this has what, like relative? This is coordinates, but. Oh, this is if you're doing it with, uh, right, axial coordinates. Okay. Let's have a look at the ax axial coordinates. So it's essentially just offset a little bit. Mm. <laughs> oh, no. It's all starting from the center as well. Which I suppose, it, I mean, it doesn't have to be. For example, we could just do positives. We could do... Uh, well... I don't know about that. Maybe it would be better to just start from the center and do... Zero, zero is the center one. I'm going to take another quick loop break. Um, go to sleep because it's almost 9pm. No worries, dude. Have a good sleep. At least you can leave it running overnight. Um, good to see you as well. Thank you for keeping me company. Uh, and I'll be right back.
Welcome back. Not going to sleep. It was an answer to I know what you're doing today. Oh, I see. Just going to sleep. <laughs> are you uh, are you actually staying up until 2 a.m.? Hmm. I really want to wrap my head around this coordinate system. And I'm still trying to figure out whether it would be better to use three-digit coordinate system. Or, you know, three-dimensional coordinate system. So if we had a 3D array, would every... Three D array, three by three, um, would be twenty seven. Um, well, I suppose we'd be using a a two by two. Yeah. Zero one two or a three. I suppose no, it would be a three by three, wouldn't it? Um, so we start at zero one two. That's one two three. Um, so that would be, that should be 27 tiles. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Um, where are the remaining eight tiles? So we've got, got 0, 0. Oh, we've got 0, 0, 0. Because it's a 3 by 3 by 3. Um, got 0, 0, 0. Got 0, 0. Do we have a zero zero one? We do not. There's no zero zero one because if you move along any axis, you you can't move along one axis at once. So that must be where the eight missing ones are. We could do that, I think. The only other issue is if we're using indexes, we can't use negative numbers because it goes from zero upwards. You can't have a negative index. So how's that going to work? Would we have to start this at three, three, four, five, or oh, even, sorry, start it at two. Um, so the center one is two, two, two. And this one would be, uh, if we do QRS, this one would be two, zero, four. This one would be three, zero, three. Yes, that's how we'd have to do it. So zero, zero, zero would be empty. Would, hmm. I think that's how we do it. Right, let's, let's try and code that and, oh, I don't like this. Uh, it's a list of a list of a list of Catan tiles. <laughs> Grim. Um, private void uh, initialize tiles for each well, tile in tiles. And I think I prefer laying it out in this horrible... No, it's not what I want. It's... I think we're going to want a uh, board size. Int board size. Set that to three for now. Um, 
less than board size. So it'll do 0, 1, 2. Um, this is less than board size. That's the board size. Beautiful. So in this loop, or maybe maybe we'd better format these a little better. Um, let's have a look at back at this grid again. And how do I, I'm struggling to even set this up? Um, so there are. We've got three axes. What do we do? Can we like spiral out? That doesn't seem like a good idea. Even just iterating through these is um, hurting my brain. Unless we just initialize the whole thing um, to hexagons and work out some formula to tell if It shouldn't be hexagon, or it should just be null in that case. Um, So this should actually be from uh should fruit be from zero, but it should be from board size up to board size times two. Um times two minus one, I think. Max index equals board size times two minus one. Don't think I need this in brackets, but I'm going to do anyway just to make it clearer. Um, and then this is max index, max index, and max index. For now, let's just do tiles. Uh, I JK, if that's actually going to, no, I've got to do JK like that. Yeah. Equals new tan tile. And at this point, while we're making these, we also have to assign the types and the numbers. So let's make another list of, no, we're gonna want a dictionary um, with the key as a resource type. Ah, so this is, this is probably the point where we want to move our things like the tan resource type and 
the player color building type into their own common area. Um, how do I want to do this? I might make a, a new project and just call it a, well, a class library and just call it common. And in here we'll have enums That, okay, um, and in here we will add all of our enums. Oh, I just uh, copied instead of pasted. We also want to add a reference uh, from, oh, did I not call this? Oh. Hand.common. So in domain, we want to add a project reference to common. And I'm sure we can do the rest later. Um, we do to use. Can I just use, just use common? Is that not going to, ah, because I'll have to do tan dot, or enums dot. Mm, maybe I should, should call this enumerations. Enumerations dot tan resource type. Or using common enumerations. Huh, maybe, yeah, that's probably the best way. It's fine. So let's add the others as well. Catan player color, Catan building type. Um, oh, Catan port type as well. Right, there we go. Um, I think what we can do is hide that for now cool uh, move enums to common project hey delirious sorry I've only just seen your message good to see you how are you doing God, it's been five minutes since you sent that unbelievable so slow Okay, so uh, where are we at? Board. We are adding a new Catan tile uh, with, uh, actually no, we what we were doing was making a dictionary. Uh, the um, remaining resource tiles equals new dictionary of um, Catan resource. Enum. Can I not put in Catan? Oh, because I don't have it um, up here using static Catan dot common dot enumerations. I think this should also be namespace Catan dot common which is going to break everything else. 
go through and fix that now. All right, this one. Okay. So we've added the ten a resource type and an int. So that's how many we've got left of each one. Um, so let's initialize this now. May end up separating this into a different method. Um, Ten resource type dot uh, wood. Does that not work? Do I have to do it in brackets. Is it not new? Is it just um Oh there we go. Ten resource type dot brick. Uh I don't actually know the proper values for these, so we'll do that in a moment. Ten resource type dot sheep. And resource type dot uh, wheat. Like that is wood. Wheat. And oh, actually, no. We need to put in desert as well. Or finally, ten resource type dot desert. And this actually is one. There is one desert tile. So let me quickly look up. Um, ten board. Right, there you go. Should be able to see that. Um, so we have four woods, four wheat, four sheep, and three of brick and ore. Four wood, three brick, four sheep, four wheat, three. Or hmm. let's see, private, um. Tan tile. Create new Catan tile. And what we want to pass in, actually, let's, before we do that, um, all over the place here, uh, remaining activation numbers. It's new dictionary. Uh, and we want two integers. One for the activation number, one for the number of them left. So we want two, we want one, two. We want two threes. We want two fours. We want two fives. Uh, we want two sixes. Oh, I really don't like that. Space it out. Uh, we want zero sevens, so we're just not going to put sevens in. Want two eights, two nines, two tens, and one eleven. Oh no, two elevens. That's right. One twelve. That's right, isn't it? So you got one twelve there. Uh, one, two there, you've got two threes, you've got two fours, two fives, two six, two seven, uh, no sevens, two eights, 
um, two nines, two tens, and two elevens. That's right. Yep. So in this, we want to pass in a dictionary of this type. Remaining resource tiles. And we also want to pass in dic this dictionary. Remaining activation numbers. Now, I believe if we change these arrays, they should, when the method returns, they should remain um, changed. It should be passing by reference rather than, no, by, um, yeah, by reference rather than value, I think. So we're going to say uh, var new tile equals new. No, before we even do that, we want to go uh, tile type equals Right, we're going to have to make a private stat, so we can't, we can do static, do we need a static? Um, I think we can just do random, random. Uh, equals new random. There we go. Um, equals random dot next. And we want it between one and six, I believe. The exclusive upper bounds. Right, so we actually want it to be within seven. Well, how do we just... Mm. We want to take a random type. Decrease it by one. Um... It's the best way of doing this. It's almost 30% done already. I thought you said it was going to take seven hours. Wow, I've been streaming for three and a quarter hours. We might have to call it a day fairly soon. I do need some lunch still. And then we'll continue this another time. I'll do some off stream research so we can make uh, faster progress next time. So the challenge here is to keep picking random resource types from this uh, lot we have here until we don't have any left. So we could just keep... Um, uh, I think that unfortunately is the best way. I think we do... Um, let's do int of tan resource type type what can we do tile type of 
fine. We'll do int. Okay. Uh, equals random knock next between one and seven. While remaining resource tiles of type um, tile type count is greater than zero. Uh, not dot count dot um, is just greater than zero. You just want the value. And we want to convert this int to a Catan resource type. Hmm. I mean, it will work. We also want to make sure uh, if I don't often work with dictionaries, but I suppose um, if remaining house dot count zero um, turn null. Uh, do you want to make this nullable? Um, not really. I think I'd prefer to throw an exception here because we shouldn't be passing in remaining resource tiles where there's nothing in the array. Remaining resource files is null. All oh, account is zero. Remaining resource tiles. Oh, actually, we want the name of that. This is just so if something does go wrong, you know what's happening. Um, should not be null or empty. Must not be a null or empty. And to be honest, we can copy the same for remaining activation numbers. So we get a tile type. Um, we get a activation number. Sure, we'll stay with that. Nah, that's fine. Um, equals random dot next between two and thirteen. Or can we just do random dot next um, between? Yeah, let's get some more things going. Int. Um, Oh, we can't. Can we sort the dictionaries that come in? Um, I'd rather not do that every time. That's because Windows file transferring is weird with how it tells how long is left as it goes off current speed and current speed will vary depending on size of the file being transferred. Yeah, like it's, it's virtually impossible to tell or work out exactly how long it's going to take. Seeing the transfer speed go 
uh, above 500 megabytes and as low as 200 kilobytes. Yeah. Well, um, from the sounds of it, it doesn't uh, look like it's going to take as long as you thought, which is good. Seven hours is ridiculous. Mm. I'll just make sure they're sorted before, yeah, um, before they actually come in here. And then we can go int low, lowest tile type, uh, type num equals. Can we go like first? In, I don't think a dictionary has an order though. Right, remaining, remaining resource tiles dot first. It, does. Ah, the values dot. Lowest? Is there a lowest? I don't think there is. Uh, or there might be math dots. Uh, min. There we go. Oh no, that's the values though. How we want the keys. go back on that. I'm going to go dot first uh, dot key turn that into an int uh, int highest tile type num equals int many resource tiles dot last dot key assuming they're ordered correctly and then we can just do file type equals random dot next between lowest and the highest plus one. And then we also do um, remaining resource tiles tile type. Resource tile. Oh, type, sorry. Convert that to that. Um, that's minus. If this equals zero. Then, how do we get rid of just get rid of this from the dictionary? I'm pretty sure we can. Was it just um, dot remove? Removes the value of the specified key. That's what we're looking for. Maybe we'd better be better off getting um, tan tile type, tan resource type, uh, tan tile type, and then we can set tan tan tile ah. Tan tile type equals tan resource type or tile tile type converted to a tan resource type, and then we can just use tan tile type here, here, and here. 
Right. This is looking quite messy, but once we get it working, we can then refactor it to make it look neater. Int lowest activation num equals uh, remaining activation numbers dot first dot key. Highest activation number equals remaining uh, the last remaining activation number key and we want a random number between those two values. And then all we want to do is uh, turn new Catan tile of type, uh, Catan tile type activation number. We do also need to do the check on this to say um, remaining activation numbers, activation number minus minus. And if remaining activation numbers Activation number equals zero, then we remove it. Is it going to. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted. That's quite a long method. Um, could probably split that up a little bit. I mean, that, that works, I think. Equals create new Catan tile. Um, and we pass in remaining resource tiles and remaining activation numbers. Now, we still have the problem of the board. <laughs> not putting the board in the right place. Um, or not putting the hexes in the right place. So how do we go through and work out which um, positions we don't want the hexes in? It's a tricky one. Might be a problem for next time though. I think this is probably where we'll end it for now. It's been three and a half hours. Um, I need to get some food, I need some time to just sit down and think, which is not the most exciting thing to see on stream. Um, think about how we're going to do this, Get wrap my head around the coordinate system or figure, eight, figure out a better way of doing it. Uh, and then we can come back next time and hopefully get the board set up and board representation, board representation completely sorted. And then we can move on to different things. Um, I do want to write some tests for it as well to make sure it does actually work. It's very important. But I think that is for next time. Time goes by so fast when messing with code. It really does. It really does go by fast. But we've made a good start, I think. Um, yeah, it's just the, the representing a hexagonal board is something I've never come across before or never attempted and it seems to be pretty maybe maybe it was not difficult but it'll just take some time for me to wrap my head around it I think but yeah that's it thank you for being here and I don't know when I'm going to stream next it might be Tuesday um, but no guarantee on that. We'll just have to keep an eye out. Um, I'll probably schedule it like a, a day in advance or like half a day in advance. So you should be able to see it. Um, yeah, good to see you all. Take care. And I will catch you later. Goodbye.